Hi guys! We are cleaning up this morning and getting ready. I'm cleaning my cake up to go meet Sarah, my niece, and my cousin Debbie at a place called Black Pan Gorge and we're going to go for a walk, a nature walk. It's going to be a beautiful day like in the 70s and to me that is perfect weather. Did I say welcome to my crazy life? No. Welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. Starting the vlog. And I'm right now, sorry for the water, but I'm tidying in the kitchen. Look at this mess. Guys, I've got a mess. I've been cross-stitching like a maniac. Because I want to finish laying the bricks on this one project that I'm doing. I am rinsing out cups so I can make some iced coffee for my trip. It's not really a trip. It's about, from me, I think it's about a half an hour. My cousin lives in Heath, where it's at. And then um, my niece, Sarah, I think she's got about a half an hour drive too. But this is a place she really enjoys. I've not been. Um, but I know it's beautiful. I saw some pictures and I know we can get our kayaks going soon and, um, all the cat bowls, guys, all the cat bowls and go from a place called Dillon Dam, which is like a little lake place and we can kayak through the gorge. So I would like to check that out today and then see about us doing that. Um, because I know at the dam, you can rent kayaks. I have one, but my cousins don't. And Sarah doesn't, but she goes and rents them there fairly regularly. So there, we got that tidied up, right? Gotta clean the dishes and wipe things down. I need to get new, I wanna get a new kitchen faucet. I need new bathroom, oops, new bathroom faucets. But with time, that all costs. Oh, speaking of costing, I went on like I do every day and checked IKEA to see if they are doing, uh, it's their click and collect, if they're doing it at my store. And I think they've opened it up today. The website is pretty much crashed right now, so. I'll wait till later, maybe tomorrow, hopefully, I will be able to order my desk for my office so I can get that set up. Because right now, things are just too much up there, too much for me to handle. The mess, the unkempt, tight, untidy area, too much. The other thing that's too much is my coffee situation guys I just love coffee of all flavors and varieties but it's messy my whole and here's what I'm contemplating tell me I'm crazy so I don't do it I have right here my Keurig which I use every day because I'm on the go kind of person you know oops I'm gonna turn that on I'm an on the go kind of gal so my Keurig works perfect for me but I love iced coffee. I like cold brew too. And I have my little cold brew set up, which I guess I could just do. But I love iced coffee, like brewed iced coffee. I'm debating going out in the garage and getting my coffee maker. So before I got the Keurig, um, I have a Cuisinart grind and brew. So you put the beans in it, it grinds, and then it... Um, Bruise the coffee into a pot. You don't have to use the grinding function. And I was thinking, gosh, if I had that out, I could make pots of coffee and put it in the fridge. And then I would have iced coffee for all summer. Is that excessive to coffee makers? Or should I just bring it out to brew the coffee and put it away? I don't know, guys, but I'm contemplating. And unfortunately for me, contemplating typically leads to just go do it. You know, I don't know. This is vinegar and water, by the way, that I'm spraying on my Keurig. 
I like that for my appliances and stuff because it, it's not, you know, poisonous like ooh, chemical cleaners are, which I use chemical cleaners too, don't get me wrong, but around the Keurig, I prefer the vinegar water. Yes, yes, it smells, I know, but it goes away pretty fast and it's, it cleans up my maker. I like to keep it. Sorry, breaking things. This is why we can't have nice things, guys. Because I break all the things. All right. So what we're going to do, I had leftover coffee in my cup this morning that I didn't drink. So I'll just put it in here. I'm going to brew another cup. No, I'm not. It's 9.47. I have to leave here around 10 o'clock. 10.30. So I'm just going to clean out my cup. I'll put some ice in here. And this is just to have on my way there. When I get there, I will, uh, or I have a water bottle. Oh, I'll show you my water bottle. I gotta fill it. Hold on one second. Okay, I decided I am brewing more coffee because that's just not enough. I mean, come on guys. I'll make it cold before I leave. Here's my new water bottle. I got it at Walmart because I just can't spend $40 on a hydro flask. The brand is tall and this holds 40 ounces, but look how pretty it is. I like this handle um, and that the lid I can hold because I hate having the double hand drinks. It doesn't sweat, which is why I wanted it. It's going to be perfect for the beach. 40 ounces is a lot of water for me to have, but I get hot and I like water and the top is a little screw. It's a little tight, which I guess is good. It won't leak. But like once it's open, I'll just leave it unscrewed. And it's a spout. You could stick a straw in there too. but. And then this is like rubbery. It was, I think, $15. So I don't think that's bad at all. I have tested it. I, um, this? And the lid's been on. I put ice in it and water and left it um, overnight. And the next day I came and it was full of water. And I just used my ice cubes for my ice maker. And then, I think that's enough ice. Let's do about there. Maybe I'll get a little more ice. I need to clean out my ice maker. but I need to get a new filter so in theory it's just tap water coming out of my refrigerator too. Now we're gonna put water in it like you do it's a water bottle right? But I'm anxious to test it and walking today is the perfect day. I wish it would fit in my bicycle but it won't. So I have on my bike two water bottle holders. Um, and what I typically do on my when I'm riding is I um, freeze one of the water bottles or I'll half freeze them both with one with like a Powerade or a Gatorade and one with water. So I'll fill it halfway, freeze the bottom, pour my cold liquid on top and while I'm out bicycle riding, it stays cold longer. So there, we have water. It doesn't leak. It's already pretty, so I don't have to stick stickers on it. It matches my um, bag, because that's important, right? And then it has this handle. It's heavy, though. Guys, water's heavy. So we'll carry it with us while we walk, and I will have water to drink. Now I have this hot coffee then I'll put my cream and sugar in drink a little hot and then I'll put some cold in there for my road trip here in a minute and I will bring you along and I will get Sarah to say see I'll ask her I won't assume she will but I'm sure she will I will ask Sarah to say hi so you can see her face and maybe Debbie will say hi too while we're out walking 
because I think that would be fun. I store my sugar packets, which I need to figure out if this whole earth comes in like sugar and not in just packets. But anyway, I store them all in these mason jars. And I have that one. And then I have my coffee one. And my basket. All right, I gotta get ready to roll. I will see you on the trail. Now I have it on. Hi, pretty Hi. people. I'm Sarah. I'm, <laughs> I'm Debbie. She's with me. They're together. I saw you, girlfriend. I saw you. I was there. Should I take my shoes off? Sure. We're the yes girls. Crocs. I do not understand. Okay. It's okay. Whoa. I failed. Did not fail. Try again. You, we don't fail. You tried. Okay, ready? Yeah. Woohoo! Right, guys, I'm at Costco. Look at the ribs. $32, but it's three racks. So I grabbed one of those. For vacation, I got my cheese wisps. Very low carb. But look what I found. It's macadamia, pecan, papitas, almonds, and cheese balls. Keto mix. Pretty clean. No sugar. Four carbs. All natural. I think that was like 13. And then I got for the trip as well some chicken strips. Um, I don't know if I would only need one of these to take. But they're going to be for the beach. And I'll explain that in a second. And look at this. Aloe vera. Cool spearmint time hand sanitizer. With eucalyptus and essential oils. It's a nice size. And then I grabbed uh, 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 some sandals. They're eyes odd. They're cute. They were $15. So that's everything I bought. All right. Now what we're going to do is wrap, wrap up a couple racks of ribs here. So, this package that I got from Costco, sorry, I gotta wash my hands, came with three of these racks, which for our family, that's, you know, dinner. For me, not dinner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just wrapping them in foil first. Nothing too crazy, right? And then I'm gonna wrap them in plastic wrap and put them in my freezer because I won't eat more than, it'll, well, it'll take me probably, I would say a week to eat um, one wrap that I'm gonna cook in the crock pot tomorrow. I will bring you along with that. So what I'm trying here for is to, really get these in here. Now I will eat these this summer. This is not, oh, excuse me. This is not long-term storage for sure. This is, keep it in the fr fresh in the freezer, um, airtight. Cause that's how we roll around here. And then one more the other direction. I have this big, um, container of saran wrap that I got at a kitchen supply store a while ago. I don't often use it, but I decided it's going to get used now. There we go. And what I like is it's huge. It's like 2,000 feet. There we go. So I'm going to wrap them both up like this and put them in the freezer. Now, the one I'm keeping out, let me show you what I'm gonna do with that. If I can find my big cutting board. One second, I got my big cutting board and a knife. And my big zip bag. Now, lots of people do this a different different ways. 
but this is how I do it. Right? Because this is going to be me. You're supposed to take off this, it's called the silver skin on the back. And it's a challenge, I'm not going to lie, to get it off. I typically use like paper towels. It's this skin. You can also, which I have done, get up under it with like a butter knife and pull it that way. But you want to do this so when you're doing the low and slow cooking, it helps it in the flavor. Now this end was, there was hardly any. So that was it on that side. Now over here, but if your hands get, you get like greasy from the fat, you can't get a good hold on it. So, there we go. I put a butter knife up under it, A, so I don't like, you know, cut myself. And B, it doesn't cut through the meat. And there we go. There's one more, and then one little piece over here. Nothing major, need one more. And if, you, if it's really good like that, you can get your hand up underneath there and that helps you. Okay, one more. Eh, eh, eh. There we go. I got it. Okay. Then I flip it over and I cut them into however many ribs that I think for a meal for me and put them in the bag. And you can, I'm gonna dry season those in the bag with some barbecue seasoning of some sort that I may have to look up how to create, but that's okay. And you're cutting them between the bones. Now these are St. Louis style ribs, so these are pork ribs. And I will cook them in the microwave, or the microwave, in the crock pot. Okay, well that one was, but that's what they look like. That's one rib. I'll cook them in the crock pot most of the day tomorrow. And then um, when I'm ready to eat them, I'll throw them in the broiler with some barbecue sauce on them. So I just put like a barbecue dry rub on these and let it dry marinate overnight. And that is it. That is how I handle when I buy bulk ribs. So I'll have two of these racks in the freezer and one here to go. All right, let's get these in the crock pot. These are our ribs that sat in the dry rub all night. Crock pot will be on low. And I'm sure you all know, but don't turn your crock pot on until you're ready to put your cold stuff in or you could crack your tile. Now, most of these have good seasoning coverage. I'm not going to worry too much about it, but if you didn't dry rub them, this is the time you want to put seasoning for sure. Some people put um, like Dr. Pepper in the bottom or soda or juice. I don't. I just, that's it. I stick them in there on low. I put the lid on and I go all day, gone. It'll take several, several hours. You'll know when they're done, they'll start falling off the bone. And that's part of taking that silver skin off helps. Um, and it helps the tendons and everything melt and make them so juicy. Then we'll put them on a cook uh, sheet tray. I will slather them, slather, that's a word, with barbecue sauce, my sugar-free, and then I'll stick them under the broiler. Now, if you had a grill, like a gas grill, you could throw them on the grill, but I'm not gonna use a whole chimney full of charcoal just to char them up. I'll just put them under my broiler. Plus, it's going to be in the 60s today. All right, well, that's it. That's my meal. I'm going to decide if I'm going to do, like, a, a cooked cabbage or if I'm going to make coleslaw. That is later to be determined. But that's everything. All 
right, our ribs are done. I'm gonna pull this over here. Oh yeah, these look delicious. Look at these ribs. And they're just tender and juicy. Now, like I said, you could put these in under the broiler, which is what I'm gonna do. Or you could throw them on the grill because all we're really gonna do is char up the barbecue sauce. Right, because they're barbecue ribs. So I'm putting, this is my sugar free. And I put it in a little container with a, just a silicone baking brush or basting brush. I like a lot of barbecue sauce on mine, but I put it on a couple thin coats. If you don't like barbecue sauce, you don't have to. You could just eat them plain. I mean, they do have seasoning rub on them, so they're gonna be flavorful. But this is just gonna help and give them that barbecue outdoor flavor. Since I don't really have a grill or a smoker to do it, the crock pot is my answer. And again, cooking for one, heating up the charcoal just to char these isn't really something I'm gonna do. But I am, when this is done, I'm gonna put them under that broiler and then I'm gonna get this stuff out to make coleslaw. Just a small batch and then I'm gonna freeze the uh, rest of the cabbage and I'll use that in another dish later on. Oh, guys, look at that. Is that not delicious looking? Yum. Okay. I'm going to stick these in the broiler in a minute. But first, we're going to whip up some coleslaw sauce. right because that's what we need I wing it but it's about you know I'll use about a half a cup of mayonnaise just a little drop of lemon juice salt and pepper And you, I want to put this on my cabbage and let it sit. I like a lot of pepper. We've talked about that. And then I just need a little splash of vinegar. You can use any kind. I have white vinegar here. You could use um, apple cider would be delicious. I'm also going to stay. Now, the real recipe or a recipe that I have seen calls for sugar. Um, ugh, clearly, I'm not using real sugar. But what I do is stick a packet of my sweetener. The recipe, the, one of the recipes I saw called for two tablespoons of sweetener. That's a lot. Oh, and I'm waiting to hear from Ikea. I was able to get through with their online order and pick it up today. I put the order in at 8.30 this morning, which is great. And I'm supposed to have it ready by between 11 and 3. It's 2 now. So I'm going to taste this. Mmm. Plenty of salt in it. I'm going to do just a little more vinegar. Just to give it that kick, a little bite to it. I'm a very pickly person. I like pickles. I like vinegar and that tang. Mmm, perfect. Yeah, I think that's good. I just need two. 
And what will help is the sweetener in there will mellow out. Now I'm not going to use all of this cabbage. That's just too much for me. But what I am going to do is put some cabbage in here. And the rest, like I said, I'll throw it in the freezer and then I can just grab it when I need it. That's the one thing about living alone and when you go shopping for things, it's hard. You know, I buy the smallest head of cabbage, but it's still a lot of cabbage when you cut it up like that. I don't like being wasteful, so I get a lot of use out of my freezer. Even just for basics, cutting up an onion. Now, a lot of cabbage has purple cabbage in it, celery maybe, or definitely carrots, but that's just all added carbs that I don't want. So, this is what I need. Now, it's a little dry right this second, but what's going to happen in a couple hours, the cabbage will let loose its water, and then I'll have a very nice... Um, juicy col or coleslaw. So I like that. Mmm. That's good. Okay. So this is done. I'm going to do a lot of this. Shake it up. Now I'm going to put a little more cabbage in there because it will break down. Get another clean fork out. That's the beauty of cooking for yourself. You can just taste all the stuff you want. You went during COVID. There we go. That's perfect amount of cabbage. Oops. Cabbage to dressing for me. You do you. I will put it in the fridge and we're going to broil the ribs. So give us a second. Well, guys, I'm sitting here editing this video and realized I never ended the vlog tonight because I was going to end it at Ikea picking up my new desk, but I didn't get the message or an email. My order, I guess, wasn't ready till 730, except for they closed at 7, so I'm so confused. I'll go tomorrow and <laughs> pick it up, and we'll start the next week's vlog with me picking up the desk from Ikea or it'll be a um, its own video on me building the desk and setting up my office. But anyway, I'm sitting here in my... Oh, there's Alex and packing stuff. But Alex is in his tower of bed. I don't know what I'm going to do with that mess. But yeah, I'm sitting here in my jammies editing a video. And I realize I did not end it. So you guys have a great one. And I will talk with you later. Bye.